What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the money. Oh, what is the MG Modified Tour here on NBCSN getting ready to kick us off yet again with these modified boys here from Oswego Speedway. Nice little track here, home of the super modified, but how about the regular modifieds, huh? It's time for them to try their hands at running uh, this track and we'll see how it goes. She's got the 31 of Gene Pack, I believe you had a Gene Pack on the pole. To look Todd Zaggedy starts to his outside and the green flag waves. We are racing at Oswego. Immediately you see Pack jump out to the lead, but the four of Marquis had a run right to his rear bumper as well and Jerry Marquis is going to clear the two of Todd Zaggedy Zaggedy rolling the top though trying to cut back down and get the run out of the corner couldn't quite get there Pack is going to lead lap number one they are bunched up right on top of each other through the corner behind nose to tail close quarters racing here three wide back here Chris Mack way down on the bottom of the racetrack Gets that car to rotate really good and hold it, holds it down on the bottom of the racetrack and he seems to have figured something out around here. A lot of these other guys haven't been able to. He gets that nose to the inside of the 10. He's diving it off kind of deep and just kind of letting her eat on the bottom of the racetrack. He gets it to slide into a hole right there. Mind you, he started at the very back of the field. He's already climbed his way up into the top 10. Running 7th right now passing cars like they are sitting still has another run down the back straight away where is he gonna go this time He's gonna stay behind the 07 cuts low gets a great run straight drive off of turn number four dives to the inside underneath Miller in the 69 clears him junior Miller falls back now Chris Mack will enter the top five that car is moving like it is on rails here tonight Underneath the 15 of Zach Sylvester comes across his nose to clear for P4 and now a little bit of contact to the rear bumper of the 2 of Zegedy who tried to cut down in front of that 86. It's going to keep that spot. Actually shot that 86 car up the racetrack and now the 86 a little loose trying to get into the corner yet again. Rolls the top though. Diving it off into 1 and 2. <clears throat> really high up on the racetrack there can't tell if he got the wall or not now underneath the two nearly made contact once again but this time it gets to the inside of Zaggedy Zaggedy with the runoff down the front straight away but it's going to be Chris Mack hanging on and taking the spot away getting sideways but taking the spot away convincingly off of turn number two now has his sight set on the four of Jerry Marquis now Marquis pretty fast in this one you saw him try to chase down the 31 of pack for the lead but Chris Mack just has it figured out on the bottom he's running two tenths faster than the rest of the field right now as far as the fastest lap time of the race goes and that's cutting through traffic it'll be a nightmare for the rest of these guys make that way more than two tenths goodness gracious that's four tenths over the rest of the field or five cents rather over the rest of the field here that 86 car is hauling the mail he's clearly figured out something about this racetrack that the rest of the field hasn't remember he won here in 2006 the inaugural season didn't have a 07 season but now we're back for the second season this is 2000 in the 2000 in the year of 2008 getting ready to um set set us up for another season in 09 and actually two seasons because we'll have a split as Chris Mack goes ahead and takes the lead right there from Brian pa or excuse me Gene Pack but now Pack back to the inside looking for the race lead on Mack. Pack and Mack going at it still but Mack's gonna clear. Pack overdrove the entry Chris Mack driving away with the race lead here at Oswego as you hear the tires screaming 
as he pushes through the corner, almost got into the wall, got out a little wide right there. A little bit of a side-by-side -side battle back here for P4 as Todd Zaggedy is underneath the 15. He's going to take the spot away from Zach Sylvester in that 15 car. And more side-by-side -side behind. Eric Beers underneath the 48 of Tony Hirschman. Hirschman's actually going to get the run off the top as he pins a three car down, but straight away is not long enough for him to clear. And Beers is going to clear the 48 car. More side by side further behind. Brian King in the 17. And Burt Myers in the 1. Bobby, uh, Brandon, Bobby, one of two. Hutchins in the 14. Right there as well. L.W. Miller behind that battle. Everybody looking to take advantage here. Early in this race. Not even at the halfway point. But quickly approaching it. As this race goes on. Chris Mack entering turn 3 now as we speak. The uh, tail end of the field. Tim Brown back here in the 83. Just coming off of turn number 2. As Chris Mack enters 1 and 2. We got one on pit road. That's James Savali having an issue with his car. Looks like he's done for the day. Very unfortunate. Tough break for Savali there. Look at the run Hutchins got through the corner. Got cut off a little bit there, but still carried his momentum on corner exit underneath Burt Myers. Now three wide as L.W. Miller sent it in underneath Myers. Almost took him three in the middle. Uh, got a battle brewing here. Different lanes being used. Ed Flimke up high is actually going to drive to the outside at a 69 of Junior Miller. Can he stay alongside that 69 car? Looks like he will. Flimke keeping his nose up high. Very aggressive move. Trying to pass on the outside. Here from Oswego. Couldn't quite get it to work. Jason Myers in the four. Runs third. The other four all the way back here. The 4F, I believe. Or 4V4, v excuse me. The V4 of Jerry Marquis. Way at the tail end of the field. Very uncharacteristic to see him run at the back like this. Just having an off night, it seems. As we approach the halfway point in this race, it'll be two laps until halfway when Chris Mack hits the line here as we ride on board that 86 car. these cameras as camera angles are or cameras are sitting but either way we're getting some cool camera angles here Chris Mack continues to lap quicker than anybody else out there on the racetrack as he's the only car to break the 18 now coming off the of turn two yet again Max just wrapping that thing right across the bottom of the racetrack. And I think what we're seeing is a lot of these guys kind of diamonding in the corner. They enter down low, work their way back up towards the center, run the middle for a little bit, and then cut down low on entry or on exit again. I don't think they're able to hold that car down on the bottom and find speed the way Chris Mack is. It might be a setup thing. But now they know what they'll have to... They're going to have to look for as the 86 car slides off turn number two. 
very sideways when Chris Mack there. A little bit too much throttle on corner exit. A little more careful that time by learning a little bit of patience and control in the long run here. Does have the fastest car by a long shot. Papyrus Racing prepared that car really well for this race. I think they've been saving. They've been sitting, planning, waiting on this race. Saving the best of the best for this track. Considering how well Chris Mack understood this track last season. Or two seasons ago. Or technically last season. But two years ago when we ran here. In the inaugural season. In these last couple years, they've been planning if we ever get a shot to run modifieds again here at Money Car, which we're getting this year, we're going to plan for this race. Make sure Chris Mack has the best of the best for this track specifically, since he understood it so well. We want to refine that glory, recapture some of that, that victory. Find our way back into victory lane. And that's exactly what they're doing here tonight. Chris Mack now lapping the tail end of the field. And most of the field is actually still together. They haven't really strung too far apart throughout this race. So Chris Mack is, is kind of passing cars at this point. He's cruising. You know he likes we know he likes to put as many down as he can. We've learned it in the past series a couple seasons ago. 05, I believe, or 04, one of the two, at Lanier. Home track for him. He went out and dominated that race. Unfortunately, Lanier didn't go quite as well for him this season. He did lap a good chunk of the field, but didn't lap the entire field like he did uh, this season. But, you know, he just he loves putting as many down as he can. You don't really see margins like that anymore where there's only a couple of cars on the lead lap. We saw it at Bristol in the MG Cup Series. Race 2 at Bristol uh, on the year back in 03, the inaugural season. But that was just because of pure chaos. So many cars had wrecked out of the race by that point that it was only about four or five left running. And then their goal at that point was just to make it to the end. So they didn't really care. For the win. They just wanted to make it to the finish and collect those points and get up out of there. So it's interesting to see all but one car still out on the racetrack. And actually, yeah, James Savali is still on pit road. I was going to say he actually might be back out on the track, but no, he's not. All but one car out on the racetrack. And they're getting lapped here by Chris Mack, who's on a tear, on an absolute roll here from Oswego. He rides up behind Junior Miller getting ready to pass the 69 machine again. Dives in to the bottom of the racetrack as you see these guys running more towards the middle. I'm not sure if it's a tire saving thing or what, but Chris Mack's tires seem to be holding up pretty good. As he hooks down underneath it. To be fair, his tire, why wouldn't his tires be fine? He's been out in front just kind of cruising along. He doesn't need to push those tires to the limit so he's probably got some good tire left the rest of these guys have been racing each other pretty hard as we have 10 laps to go now they've been racing each other pretty hard throughout the whole race trying to get every, every spot they can and as many points as they can so it makes sense why their tires might be a little more beaten up but Chris Max just been on a, sun, a, a Sunday drive here he's been cruising along it's a late night drive in the city of Oswego here Wraps it around the bottom yet again. I think that diamonding of the corner is putting extra stress on those tires. Which is why we're seeing Chris Mack so much faster as well. Obviously, diamonding the corner requires you to turn the wheel a little more. And it does, you know, sometimes give you a better run out of the corner, but... And also wear your tires a lot quicker now Chris Mack just being experimental trying different lines he wants to get up there and catch those cars put those guys a lap down as you see the four of Jason Myers getting put a lap down right here that's P4 fourth place a lap down 
Zach Sylvester right here in front of our 86, our leader, the 86, Chris Mack, running third. Mack's going to get underneath him easily, but can't quite clear or stay alongside. Sylvester's putting up quite a big fight. He doesn't want to get put a lap down in this race, but Chris Mack does get underneath. He's wearing those tires out big time, pushing the car to its limits, getting it sideways down the back straight away there but clears Zach Sylvester off of turn number four. Now has his sight set on one more car here from Oswego. And that is Gene Pack, the pole sitter here. And you may be wondering, why didn't Chris Mack qualify on the pole for this race? Well, during practice, he jumped this car couldn't qualify, had to start from the back, but was guaranteed into the field because it wasn't really a, a battle. We didn't exceed our maximum starters for this track, so it was guaranteed a spot in the field and just had to prove what he could do at the back of the, from the back of the field, so had to fix that car. Couldn't fix it during qualifying. Fixed it for the race, and now taking the white flag, Chris Mack leads. Wasn't satisfied with just winning. He wanted to put everybody a lap down. Gene Pack moved up to block that 86. Mack cut underneath and puts him a lap down. Chris Mack, in dominant fashion, laps the entire field and wins at Oswego. And I know that had to be a, a really boring race for you guys. I apologize, but hey, they can't all be photo finishes, right? Sometimes you got to get a, a butt whooping like this, a snooze fest. And, I mean, we did have great racing throughout the field, though, but sometimes they just go like that. And Chris Mack, he doesn't really care. He's just going to burn this thing to the ground. It's not often you see burnouts in the modifieds, but... Chris Mack doesn't care one bit. He's going to burn this thing to the ground. After a, a hard-earned, well-deserved victory for Chris Mack. Didn't burn it down too too much here. Mike Stefanik doesn't seem too happy about the entire field getting lapped there. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. Hope to see you all next time. Until then, 